All right. So um, we mentioned that there are a bunch of dwarf planets out in the Kuiper Belt, and Pluto is one of them. It used to be classified as a planet, but since other discoveries, it's been declassified. So um, there are now three properties that NASA considers planets to have. One, the planet needs to orbit the sun instead of some other object. So for example, Chiron, or sorry, Charon, Pluto's moon is not a planet because it orbits Pluto. Um, it needs to be approximately spherical in shape, and it also needs to dominate its nearby orbit. So let's just apply this idea to a few things that are not planets. So remember Ganymede, this is one of the Galilean moons of Jupiter. Which one of the criteria does Ganymede fail? All right, yes, Ganymede does not orbit the sun. Since it's a moon of Jupiter, it orbits Jupiter. And so for that reason, Ganymede would not be considered a planet. Um, Pluto is no longer considered a planet. Um, which one of these is the reason that Pluto doesn't make the cut? All right, yeah, so Pluto doesn't dominate its nearby orbit for the reason that Charon, its moon, is another very large object that is in its nearby orbit. Um, so Pluto doesn't count as a planet for this reason. This definition is a little bit loose, but it is what the astronomy community now uses to classify things. Um, and instead, if it's not a planet, then based on which criteria it fails, it's classified as something else. So if an object doesn't orbit the sun, then it must be orbiting a planet. And so then it would be a moon. If it doesn't satisfy criteria number three, if it doesn't dominate its nearby orbit, then that's what um, classifies it as a dwarf planet. And then if it fails criteria number two, it's not really spherical enough, then it's probably a large asteroid or a Kuiper Belt object. Um, in that case, it would probably also fail number three because neither asteroids nor Kuiper Belt objects dominate in either of those locations. Um, Pluto also doesn't really dominate its orbit because it's in the Kuiper Belt, which is full of other stuff. Okay, so there are a few things that are almost planets, but they don't quite make the cut. Um, Ceres is one example. Ceres orbits the sun, so it could be a planet based on that. It is definitely approximately spherical, um, but it doesn't dominate its nearby orbit because it's in the asteroid belt. So it hasn't, you know, glommed up all the other stuff and become a planet. Vesta orbits the sun. It's also in the asteroid belt, so it also doesn't dominate its nearby orbit. And as you can see from the picture, it's not really approximately spherical. So there's some dwarf planets that are not quite so clear cut. So what do you think? Here's Haumea. Do you think Haumea, which is a Kuiper Belt object, could be classified as a dwarf planet? All right. So I see most votes for no. And if I didn't already know the answer to this, I would have to agree with you. But for whatever reason, NASA thinks that Haumea is spherical enough to be classified as a dwarf planet. So even our, our definition of approximately spherical might just refer to the shape. But for NASA, approxi approximately spherical means that it maintains an equilibrium shape because it has a, enough mass for its self-gravity to overcome rigid body forces. So clearly NASA's definition of approximately spherical is a little bit more involved than our definition. So even unexpected of things like Haumea still um, count as dwarf planets.